Hi, good evening to everyone, and thank you for joining me. I'm Dr. Philip McMillan, and today I'm trying to give an update on Gert, Gert van den Bosch. For those people who know him, they'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Because Gert has shared with us recently another thought. As you know, Gert is always trying to work out what's going to happen next. How can we mitigate what's going to happen next? And so he has shared, training is gaining a glimmer of rational hope. And I've highlighted a few points in there um, so that you'll be able to uh, understand it. Um, But the, the essence of it is that he is concerned about the impact of mass vaccination and immune um, evasion leading to vaccine breakthrough. So I'm going to be going through that in just a couple of minutes. And I'll be trying to put an explanatory slant on it where I'll be using a number of images to try and capture the concept as to what he may be talking about. And so if you want to follow Gert, you can go to his website, which is Voice uh, of Science and Solidarity. Um, It's right here. The link is in the description below. And you can see all the things he has on there, the book, his courses. And this is the one that if you want to read that article, Training is Gaining, it's also right there as well. So that's it for Gert. For my general subscribers and followers, you will know by now that it is very difficult for you to see my videos. For some reason, this seems to be hidden. So um, we've tried to come up with a way around it. One of the things that I'll remind you about is that just remember, this is just a normal video. And if you can't find the subscribe button, which seems to be hidden, you will see this little bell here. And if you hover over it, what happens is you'll see the subscribe come up. Please click on it. And critically, if you want to see the description, say for Gert's website, you come down here to look at the description and you just open it up, click on more, and it will show you all the links that are there for you to be able to look at. So what we've had to do because our videos seem to be hidden is that we've come up with a creative solution. And so we've created a chat bot. And so in this chat bot here, uh, again, in the link is in the description, What you can do is you would just put in a search term here. If you're interested in a video or something else, the chatbot at the moment is being developed. We are only at about 30% of the videos, but the big ones are already in there. So say, for instance, if you want to see GERT, you just type in GERT here, G-E-E-R-T, and suddenly all of these videos will appear related to GERT. If you wanted to see Dr. Chetty, Um, You just type that in and again, the videos appear. So this is a a brilliant um, concept and it it should work to be able to help people to see some of the over 300 videos that we've got over the years. So click on those links, join us in this journey as we continue to educate you with the science around COVID-19. So let's get started with a few points. For those people who don't know Gert, Gert is the guy who started off warning us about the impact of mass vaccination in a pandemic. This was in 2021. A lot of people discounted his concerns at the time, but as we can see, more and more variants are appearing. He looked as though it was perfectly right. The problem is, is that time is sometimes difficult to predict. And so this was said in 2021, we're now in 2024. As far as I'm concerned, everything he said has just about happened. And so in, in, in his work, he has come up with some training is gleaning, a glimmer of rational hope. So he is very concerned about the fact that in the context of the mass vaccination, there is growing immune evasion and there is lots of vaccine-induced breakthroughs, okay, VBTIs. And these vaccine and um, breakthrough infections do put you um, people at risk for other complications from the virus. And his reason or his concern about it is immune refocusing, meaning that every time you have an infection or if every time there's a variant, because the uh, immune system is focused on the spike protein, especially the original spike protein, even today, the response, the, the main response for those who are vaccinated is to the original spike protein. 
That's a problem. And so therefore, the immune system is continually trying to adjust to the fact that variants are coming along. And his concern is that this immune refocusing, um, the training of the immune cells, so this is cell-mediated innate immunity, um, is largely unaffected, he thinks, in the vaccinated populations, although its training is hindered by recurrent immune refocusing events. And so this is exactly what he's concerned about. So the, the immune system is not being trained adequately, and so therefore it is struggling to handle all of these variants coming along. For those people who don't quite believe that this is a problem in highly vaccinated regions, try and find someone that you know who lives in other parts or has family in the other parts of the world. And I guarantee you they will tell you that it's over. There is no problem in areas that had low levels because they now have herd immunity. Some may argue that more may have died, but that's a different question. For the time being, they have achieved herd immunity. There is a struggle to achieve herd immunity in the context of highly vaccinated regions. So the other things that Gert then went on to say is the fact that it is plausible that the MMR vaccine could train cell-mediated immunity particularly focusing on natural killer cells in individuals who fail to do so as a consequence of mRNA vaccination or vaccine breakthrough infections. So this is his concern about the fact that this time, at this stage in the pandemic, where we're having recurrent episodes of infections over and over again, what do we do to try and stop that from happening? Because it's affecting the population. And as Gert is concerned, he's concerned about everybody, whether they are vaccinated or unvaccinated. So in order to try and build a story, I've put together a number of images, and you can let me know if this is working. And um, I will try and see if I can take uh, a few minutes to explain what I think is happening in the context of the immune system. So let's start with this. I've put together here um, a number of individuals, all right? And actually, before I start that, I need to show you the immune system generally and what is relevant in the immune system with regards to um, infections at the moment. So just to show you this slide, this is a slide that I presented in the, in the course. Uh, you can see all of the, the slides here on the side. But this one here was the, the COVID immune team. And it was showing you monocytes, neutrophils, T cells, B cells, uh, natural killer cells, mast cells. This is the one that Gert is referring to. These ones produce antibodies. T cells do numerous roles, in, including killing virally infected cells. Neutrophils are like the pawns or the foot soldiers. Monocytes are multifunctional. They're like the tanks. So this is what I call the COVID immune team. And I have taken the approach of trying to put across the idea in the context of a border, a border patrol. And so this is what I'm going to be trying to see if I can explain. So try and work with me here as I go through this. So. The first thing that you have to understand is that I've put the macrophage as the FBI and the lymphocytes actually as the police and the NK, the natural killer cell, I've put him as MI6. Now, the, the, the reason I've done that is that the most around the place will be the lymphocytes, the police, and they will be going to try and sort things out. The FBI can do multiple roles and they are a bit more specialized. And then you have the highly specialized uh, NK cells, which go about killing virally infected cells. What we're talking about here is in the context of, imagine what, as many people are concerned about, you're having a border problem. So that lots of people in the US will understand what I mean. They're concerned that the border is porous, and they're concerned that people coming in haven't been adequately vetted and therefore could be a danger to the population. That's not unreasonable. Um, and so that's the, that's the approach that I'm taking to explain this point. So let's go along. Then you have, critically, in the context of this border issue, 
you have the mucosal immune cells. They represent the border police. And anything that is coming through the border has to pass through them. They've got the dog sniffing for drugs. They're checking and liaising people's passports. Critical part to control what comes into, your, into the country or into your body. I've put the soldier here who is armed as IgG1 because they are targeting and able to target any virus. And I've put IgG4, this is the antibody, which is the tolerant antibody. I've put them more as traffic police in the sense that they are not actually acting to stop the virus. They are kind of directing it and not killing it. So this is the situation as it is in the vaccinated cohort. Then I have here an important principle, and I hope you get this. I've put SARS-CoV-2 to look like this and a normal virus to look like this. The reason is, is that the, the ability of SARS-CoV-2 to evade interferon is because when it turns up at the border, it doesn't look like a, a problem. It, it, it's, it, she's smiling, you know. She's got all these wonderful things around. Why would she be a problem? So this represents the characteristic of the virus to hide, and this represents what it tends to be looking for. And this is part of the reason why the virus is able to evade mucosal immunity that is not adequately trained. And that's the point about an injectable vaccine is that it doesn't adequately train the immune system at the border, as I said, carrying it along. This is what then happens with IgG4. So what happens is when the virus gets into the system, so now this represents the virus in, uh, they've gotten through the border, they are then also being directed and supported by the traffic police. Instead of them trying to detain them, they are trying to just guide them hopefully to somewhere safe. And therefore the immune system is not able to get rid of the virus. And it gets even more complicated because this represents the original variant. And in this case, what I've done is I've shown the difference between the original Wuhan virus and one of the Omicron variants. The problem here is essentially that the immune system, even though it now has been warned that this smiley lady with all these flowers is a problem, here comes another variant that is a different color, and it is unable to differentiate that these are very similar. And this is the problem that we've got when you have got only a spike-related strong immune response because the spike protein is changing. And because the immune system is not recognizing the other variants, meaning that the other proteins like the, uh, the nucleocapsid protein, it's not recognizing the, um, the M protein, the envelope protein, it then allows new variants to get through the border. And so the border police are struggling here because they can't adequately identify these variants of a virus. So what Gert is pointing out is that actually, if you train these NK cells, so you're almost trying to bulk up of your MI6, if you train them and you get them to target the virally infected cells, then there is a chance in that vaccinated cohort. And that's essentially what Gert is talking about, is that he thinks that by using some of the other vaccines, and he doesn't just mention the MMR, he actually goes on to mention the, um, uh, sorry, he goes on to mention BCG as well. Because what he is saying here is that these NK cells can recognize any virus infected cell because of a natural cytotoxic re receptor. And so by the fact that they, these same peptides are mimicked with measles, mumps, and COVID, if it's picked up by NK cells, they will destroy the infected cells and then hopefully allow the immune system to get rid of the virus. He has pointed out as well that BCG could do this as well. And his hope is that, uh, you can see here, 
Um, while MMR vaccination could potentially sufficiently train NK cells to substantially diminish the viral load of newly emerging um, SARS-CoV-2 viruses, he goes on to say is that inclined to believe that preventing severe disease from this new lineage would still necessitate complementary prophylaxis with a safe and effective antiviral drug. And for those people who don't know what he means here, he's talking about something that rhymes with pectin. And you should therefore know what that is. You can't say the whole word here because it will get censored. But that's the essence of what is happening or what Gert thinks should or could happen. And we're so lucky to have the fact that he is thinking all the time, looking for solutions, trying to find ways to help people. Now, I'm going to make one final point because I think this is important. So whilst I accept what Gert is saying and his hope, I think that there is a problem here. And I'll show you what I mean. I've highlighted that for those people who are clinical, please just keep an eye on the lymphocyte count generally for patients. Now, I don't know it, it's just, it could be just me, but I am finding a significant percentage of the population has really low lymphocyte counts. Now, this is a problem because it's not just the uh, lymphocytes that are damaged here. Who else is damaged will be the NK cells. And if this is the case, if this is what is happening, where you have damage and your lymphocytes are taken out, your MK, NK cells are taken out, then you have a problem with regards to managing any viral infection. And this is where I think that we are at the moment, is I think that no matter what we do, because these two are taken out by the virus, remember the virus infects these cells and it causes them to die. This is why the lymphocyte count will go down with each infection. And this is why it's so important for the immune system, the border police, to prevent the virus from getting into the country. They do damage once they're inside the country. No matter how many police and FBI you have around, there will still be damage. So this is the essence of what we hope that something can be done. A combination, Gert is saying, of using... And one of our standard vaccines, MMR or BCG, to train the natural killer cells and the hope with a combination with, I guess, population level antivirals with things that rhyme with pectin, there could be a chance to stop what he is afraid of. And just to remind you, Gert is expecting in the next couple of couple of months almost, um, that this is going to be extremely serious in highly vaccinated parts of the world. And so if he is right, we definitely need solutions, definitely need to find ways to protect the population. So at the end, as usual, I remind you, look in the description below if you want to test out our bot and search for Gert, Chetty, anything else that we're doing. And join us as we build this newsletter that we hope will bring you valuable information in the future. So thank you again very much for joining me. Remember, click on the subscribe button. Don't let them hide it from you. Have a great evening.